What do you do when you just finish waterproofing your brand new shower? You fill it up with water and you see how you did. And check it out, gang. We got water coming out of the bottom two jets here, but all four jets on the left-hand side. Go back and check out our video. We did a whole video on how to pipe these. That one's in an H pattern. This one's in an O pattern or a loop. I think that side's much better. Another, another point for the H. That was pretty cool and that was pretty fun. Let me step inside and now we're gonna check our slope and we're gonna see how well our drain does. Here we go. Got a little vortex right here. All right, they'll be drinking that in New Orleans tonight. Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. I'm Paul with Stud Pack, and in our previous video, you saw Jordan and I waterproof this entire bathroom. Use a liquid membrane on the walls and a sheet membrane on the floor, and this yellow submarine is never leaking. So last weekend, Jordan and I drove the last truckload of furniture all the way to Texas, unloaded. My wife and my youngest son are there permanently, and my daughter and her husband drove 2,400 miles from Washington. They're there, they're settled, and they're waiting on us. Jordan and I are sleeping on mattresses in our house here, eating off paper plates, using plastic spoons, thugging it out. But we didn't come back from Texas empty-handed. We actually kidnapped my son-in-law, Jordan's brother-in-law, of course. Say hi to Rad, he helped, we helped him out on the Washington project, and he's down here for the week, helping us out on this project, make it go faster, so we can get to the stud pack house even faster than that. Oh man, I've been watching you guys on TV for so long, it's just great to be here in person. So how does it feel to be on the real set? Ah, oh, awesome, so much better, the bathroom looks bigger. Yeah, yeah. everything's bigger. <laughs> We've never had a third guy, ever. Right, right. And they're gonna see more of him, because he's gonna be helping us. In Texas, In Texas at the stud pack house. Yep. Raz is going to be on this channel a lot more. You're going to see him often, so make sure you give him a big, warm, stud pack welcome down below in the comments. Let's lay some tile. Come on. Let's do it. Woo! Every project that Jordan and I do, we're always trying to up our game and learn something new. And if you don't believe it just on this shower we're doing, wait until you see what we got planned for the stud pack house. But let's talk about this shower floor right now. Three firsts alone on the shower floor. Our first linear drain, our first envelope cut, and the first time we used this pattern in the tile. Now we've been here about two hours just talking about the layout. If you've seen some of our past tiling videos, we spend a lot of time on layout because we believe it saves us time during the tile installation, maximizing the use of tile, not having slivers, and it looks great. And it's no exception with this one. We talked about a lot of different layouts. You see my center mark on the back wall? We were gonna do some offsets, we were gonna do this, we were gonna do that. We went round and round, almost came to some blows, but we made it through. And in the end, we decided on a 0% offset just like this. And remember, we like this tile because it emulates concrete. And to us, that looks like control joints and concrete. So aside from being perfectly functional, it looks the part. So obviously, we've already cut some tile for this epic shop bathroom. And you're probably asking, hey, stud pack, you must have a sick tile setup to cut all those tiles, right? So here's part of our little tile kit right here. You guys know it, you guys love it. It's our cobalt tile saw that's been with us for about four years and it's done a bunch of kitchens and a bunch of bathrooms for us, but we're afraid it's on its last leg. If it doesn't make it, tile store's two miles down the road. But check this out. We got a great tip from a viewer. Instead of putting the pump down here in this dirty water and having the dirty water come out here by your blade, just put it in a bucket of clean water. But the suction cups on the pump didn't work so we got my trailer hitch to weigh it down. And we put the bucket up on a chair because the pump didn't have enough power to pump the water up that high. And it had a really bad kink right here. So it was basically blocking the water. So we put that little zip tie around it. So it's a whole diameter and now the water can get through. That's half our kit. Let's go check out the other half. It's a snap cutter. Now envelope cuts aren't a beginner thing, but if Jordan and I can do it, so can you. Let me walk you through how we did this. We cut and fit every tile. We're using 1 16th spacers. Check it out over here. We're using this Ruby brand with the screw down clip or the cap. We think we're really gonna like that. It'd be a first time for us instead of the wedges. So we had the whole shower laid out. We transferred the drain location, our linear drain right here, as you can see. And then we simply connected this corner of the linear drain to this corner of the shower. 
This is where the valley is, basically in our pre-slope, and we've already tested the water flow, and it runs right towards the drain. So our next step is to disassemble this, cut on all these lines, and reassemble, but this time with thin set. a crazy piece to cut because I have to keep each piece pristine. I can't overcut this piece and nick this piece mm -hmm. and all the way around. I'm afraid that if I hit it, it's going to be unclean. Flip it over and cut it from the back. Yep, but if I set it down too hard, and I'm sure we're going to find a bunch of ways oh, not to do it. I can use that. All right, hit got that, lucky. Hit that with the stone, we're good. Nice, okay. Hey bud, can you cut that corner for me? Of course, I was born for the corner. There we go, gang. One bag of thin set is done. It got us five rows of tile done, and we are so proud of this shower and the way it came out. We definitely feel like we earned another notch in our trowel handle by stepping up our tile game, doing this envelope cut and the linear drain. Just check out how nice that floor came out. And we are so proud of this shower floor. We're not gonna give you the bird's eye view of it. We're gonna take you in close and show you some of the close-up shots of some of the joints and how nice they came out. And remember gang, we did this with an old entry-level cobalt tile saw and that entry-level $150 snap cutter. But I say it's time to fire up those machines again and finish tiling this floor. We are flying through this floor and insulation, especially with three guys, but we're not going into a lot of depth, a lot of detail, because for the past three years, we've been making a ton of videos for YouTube about all the details that go into installing a tile floor, tile walls, backsplashes, niches, you name it, we got it. We're gonna put a few links to those videos, make sure you go check them out. But for right now, we got 13 pieces left. Let's get this floor done. We ran out of red cap, so we sent the lightest guy over there to Pink Panther us some red spinners. Tie Right here. Sit. Open the head. Sit. Woo! We've been waiting months for this. The last piece on the floor. Oh man, guys. I know I'm new, but it didn't take me that long. And whoop. Just like that. And look how parallel we are to our framing out here. Perfect. Check out that floor. It looks great. We are so proud of that. But as you can see, we tiled into the night. It's after sunset and Rad was a tremendous help. I don't think Jordan and I would have been able to do that in one day. I know we couldn't have. Probably take us two, maybe even that third. That was a lot of cuts, a lot of thin set, a lot of hardware we put in that bathroom. But we're gonna take off right now. We'll see you tomorrow for the fun stuff. All right, gang, we are back here at our kitchen refresh. A lot of you left a comment saying you wanna see more of this kitchen, so we're back here. And of course, we're gonna show it to you. But let's start with this ceiling. We got all the plastic down, and look at what three coats of paint does to that beadboard and that 40-year-old crown. If you didn't know any better, you would have thought that crown was bought from the store yesterday. Our goal today is to get these lights up in this slope ceiling, but we've got quite a few challenges. As you know, if you've ever done a remodel, every one of them is a little bit different but I kind of thought these track homes were all supposed to be the same. I don't know. Well, they're not. <laughs> Our first challenge for these lights, well, we've actually already overcome it. And that was drilling these five, six inch holes without hitting the joist or the horizontal blocking from the old fluorescent light wells. We took a lot of pictures, made some drawings ahead of time, and we were successful, but check it out. On these two, this one and this one, the edge of that hole saw just grazed the blocking, and this guy's gonna go in just fine. Now, I actually checked three times, right, Jordan, before I drilled those holes because I wanted to be sure I wasn't going to hit any blocking or framing. 
because if I had hit one of those, this isn't going in. And now I got to patch that beadboard and I don't even want to think about doing that. Now our second challenge is attic access. Basically, we don't have any. Check it out up here at the skylight. If you account for the framing for the slope ceiling where we put our beadboard and then the framing for the roof above, there's like this much room by the time you count for the insulation and it gets smaller as you get towards the eave where three of our lights are. We can't get up there, we tried. Over here, I can actually stand up and look down there. So we're gonna use that to our advantage, which presents the third challenge, is running all the wires. We're gonna do it for down below. I'm gonna be up above right here directing everybody. And we're gonna pull wires using our fish rods, glow rods, glow sticks. They have a lot of names. We're gonna show you each step. Let's get to it. All right, guys, I am ready to go in the attic. I drew the short straw. I'll be up there. Jordan's gonna be downstairs. We got all my tools in my boulder bag. Got my 14-2 wire. We're on a 15 amp circuit. And I got all my glow rods, so I guess the procrastination, gotta put it off. And... All right, bud, I'm headed in the attic. So uh, try to be speedy today, because I don't wanna be up there too long. I'll try my best. All right, here we go. Welcome to the attic, everybody. What are you talking about the short straw, man? You have so much room up here and it's nice and cool. This is like- It is cool. This is really it's, nice. It's, well, it's actually November now, so it is pretty cool up here. Feels like it's air conditioned, but you can see how I got to stand right here on this side of all the equipment. And there's our ceiling, our inaccessible attic space over the kitchen. So I'm gonna use those glow rods, push the wire down. They're gonna reach up and grab it. And that's how we're gonna do it. All right, getting set up to pull my first wire. Here's my glow rod. I got a little eye bolt in the end so it doesn't get caught on anything. I take my Romex with my cutters at an angle and I'm cutting through one of the conductors on that side. I'm gonna spin it over, do the same thing here. Boom, and I'm gonna pull that off. And all I'm left with is the ground. I do that at an angle again, so it won't get snagged on anything. Feed that through there and bend it back. Tape it up and we're ready to go. I think I can push this. Got it. Nice. So now what we're gonna do guys is we're just gonna cut this here and it's already up here on this one. It's already lined up. So we're just gonna cut this right here, come up here, reach through, pull it through, cut it just like the other side. Pretty much done, right? All right, man. How are you looking up here? Well, I'm waiting on y'all for this top one. We already got it. We just did it. What do you mean you already did it? We pulled it through. You did a great job fishing and it was super it was easy. right there? Yeah. Oh man. All right, cool. Let's get out of here. And if you're wondering why we call these glow rods, this is why. So if you're in a dark attic, lights go out, whatever, you drop it inside a wall, they're easy to find. All right, guys, you saw us do the drops this way. Now we're connecting them this way. And as you can see, I've already fished the glow rod to Jordan. He's got one end, my hand's on the other end. I'm just gonna pull it back. Super easy. Yeah. There we go. Right on. We've already done this one. That is all our rough wiring, we're done. Good job, guys. Good job. Woo. We're flying through this. Nice. All right, we're ready to start hanging lights, huh? Actually, I forgot one little detail and I might need your help. I kind of need you to go through that hole up there. What? Yeah, you can take the riding horse if you want. Oh. Right. I needed somebody thin and limber. I'm not sure, is that attached? All right. No. All right, so what's my objective? The switch leg for the old lights. You got to give me more slack in it. I can't reach it from where I am on the other side of the attic. Oh, it doesn't even look like I'm in the same attic. I know. All right, I'm going in. All right. <sighs> Yeah. All right, and that's where I'm headed. It looks like a collapse. Hey, dude, I'm over here now. Hey. Hey, so this is the switch leg, and something's holding it up. Your goal is to free it so that I can pull it over here and make it up at a junction box. All right, it looks like it's stapled way back here in this corner. I'm going to go check it out. Right. Okay, I got that. It should be good. All right, here. Hand it to me right here. You're gonna get poked, dude. All right, there you go. Sweet. I just could not do that from this side. Yeah. I needed somebody over there. Yeah. Perfect. Wow. All right, you want us to bring you lunch? If I eat lunch, I might not be able to get out. All right, bud, you made it down out of the attic. That's right. How was it? It was good. I've always wanted to be part of the Goonies, <laughs> so that was a uh, good experience for me. The Goonies? Yeah. <laughs> so next step, why don't you and Rad hit these five lights, you wire them up. I'm gonna go back in the attic, wire up the junction box to the switch leg, and uh, we should be done about the same time and get some light in this kitchen. Let's do it, boys. All right, do it. 
All right, I'm all done in the attic. Cool, you got four lights up. Save the last one for me. Perfect. So what are we putting in? We're putting in this six inch halo canless slope light for slope ceilings by our friends at Cooper Lighting Solutions. They sent these over to us. We love all their products and this one's fantastic. What's cool about that, no more big housing in the attic for your light. Completely retrofitable, just like you saw us do here. The junction box is already installed. You don't need a separate junction box. And we're just gonna plug this thing in, try it, see how it works. But maybe you're saying, well, stud pack, the slope of this ceiling doesn't match my ceiling. My ceiling is steeper or it's shallower. Well, check this out. This guy is completely adjustable from almost flat all the way up to 45 degrees or a 12 on 12 pitch. Let's put this one in, turn the lights on, see how they look. All right, the fifth light is in and let's check them out. Hit it, boom, look at that. Look how awesome that looks. So much better than the old fluorescence that used to be way up in the ceiling. And we even put up the new AC grills, put them up with a laser so they're nice and straight. These are on a single pole, just a three-way switch right now, but we're gonna put dimmers on everything like we always do so they can bring that light level down, whatever they want. And you wouldn't know it just by looking around, but check this out. We put in the under cabinet lights. You hit them right here, boom, check that out. They're black, so that's one option from Halo. You can get black or white. We chose the black ones because the counter is gonna be black. It's all gonna tie together and look awesome. What a huge lighting transformation in this kitchen. It looks fantastic. Thanks again to our friends at Cooper Lighting for hooking us up with these LED under cabinet and the LED slope ceiling lights. We'll make sure we put a link in the description below for both products. All right, the sun is up. It is the next day and we are finally able to walk on the tile floor in our shop bathroom. And it feels so good to be walking on tile instead of that old slab or the framing or the plywood or even the waterproofing. And just walking on this tile, you can tell how flat it is and there's no lippage. If you've ever walked on a floor with lippage and a floor that wasn't level, you can tell it. Now, if I come over here in the shower, of course I can tell there's a slope to our drain, but over here it is perfectly flat Great job everybody on tiling the bathroom floor. And if you've ever installed tile with a self-leveling system, you know the next step is the fun part. Dang dude, I need some safety glasses in here. <laughs> Now that all the spaces are up, we got a little bit of thin set that squeezed up between the tile, especially at where we had our leveling system. Now the average guy might just be tempted to grout over that, but you really gotta clean all that out so you get a nice grout job. Typically we use a knife, a utility knife, but I think the buzz saw is a little safer. I don't have an exposed blade like on the utility knife. I mean, that is an exposed blade, but you know what I mean. So we're just gonna get in there and clean that out. Down one side on the other, I'm done. So we're gonna do that for the whole room and give it a good back. This floor is done, looks absolutely epic. Rad, Jordan and I had a blast making this video for you and we had a blast installing this floor. Make sure you put an envelope cut in your like button, smash it for us, subscribe if you're new to the channel, leave us a comment, ask a question, and I'll see you on the next Stud Pack video.